Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Orange Power Podcast, our first of the year with the head coach of the Cowgirl softball team, Coach Kenny Gajewski. Coach, it's good to be back in the flow of things with you again. It is. It's always good to, to be here, and it means we're in the thick of things when this show is going on. Absolutely, and there is so much that we could talk about it. You know, we won't even get close to getting everybody caught up, but let's let's kind of walk through the season a little bit, all right? We start with the opening weekend on the road. You do the first three weekends. You had some rain outs uh, along the way, but, you know, that first 15 games really sets the tone for the rest of the, the non-conference and certainly the conference season, and you guys navigated that really well. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of always been what we want to do. We want to go out. I mean, obviously, we need to be away from here with the, the threat of some cold mm -hmm. days and that kind of stuff. So we, we've typically been um, out of town, and uh, we went out and played a really good schedule and some good tournaments again um, and uh, got back to the West Coast, which is cool, and then immediately went to the East Coast um, So it's and stayed out there. So yeah. it, it was a grind, um, but I thought our team handled it well, and mm -hmm. I think it was good for us to see how – a lot of new faces here at OSU um, were going to handle that. I think they handled it well. well what's opening day? March what? First-ish? Oh, oh February. Oh, yeah, February. Yeah, yeah, of February. Yeah. And yeah. here yet on March 26th, you had to alter another game yeah. because of weather. So, yes, weather is always a factor around here, and certainly the winds have been crazy as well. We'll get into that and get caught up, but let's talk about – I want to go back to that road game, uh, road trip, rather. You guys go to Florida. Uh, you're down there in clear water, and then you guys moved, I think, went down to Tampa in that area. Yep. And so you decided to stay, and, and it was funny because, and, and at one point, you decided to come back and have a kid, which was a really good <laughs> thing, too. Uh, so I got a chance to talk to a lot of your assistant coaches at that time for different different things, different shows. And what I, what I gathered from them is just what you said. It was really good. Our team got yeah. tight, good things, but also they were ready to be home. <laughs> well, we were all ready to, to be at home. I think anytime you're away from home for more than three or four nights, it it's becomes, hey, I mean, it's pretty good here. We we love it here, you know what I mean? And, and we love being in our own beds and with our families and friends and, and all that. So um, it was good. Um, it was a great moment, great moment in time for our, our, our kids to, to bond and uh, to grow together and to find out what we're really about. And I think we, like I said, I think we found out some really good things. We found out some mm -hmm. things we needed to get better at mm -hmm. as well. Um, we weren't void of that, but um, it was a successful trip. You know, you got to be careful when you refer to kids as kids. Sometimes the young ones you call the babies out there. So let's sidestep for a minute. Let's talk about the real baby, baby gray. All right. <laughs> so baby gray comes into this world and first off and and, and i don't know if if uh if jason can get a shot of it but you know that that industrial <laughs> strength swing over there is absolutely incredible it's pretty neat that was a gift from my uh my coffee group and uh they they worked on that for a long time and we're trying to to figure out what they want to do uh do for baby gray and um, that I thought that was that that's one of the coolest <laughs> coolest gifts and uh, he's not ready to be in it yet uh, but we'll get there and, and I think he'll enjoy that we got a lot of other kids that are running around here so I'm sure they'll get in that thing you know and that's that to <clears> me <throat> was really where I wanted to go with that as well is again you got a young staff with a lot of kiddos running around here if you're an 18 year old and you're going through a tough grind right the, the season's hard. Whatever the case may be, all of a sudden Vanessa's kids show up or Stacy's kid, that baby Gray shows up. There is such healing power in kiddos, yeah. and that is one of the really cool things that's going on right now with this program. Yeah, I w w would agree. That's kind of the way it's always been here. It's I've always kind of said this kind of like romper room, uh, <laughs> you know, especially after their games, win or lose. We don't shut the, the, the door if we don't win. We don't let people not come, come in here. We just, that's what we do. And I've kind of always said, hey, if you're here, come say hi to us, no matter what. Like yeah. we want that, and we want that um, family type uh, atmosphere always here. That's not that's not de dependent on if you w win or lose. Mm -hmm. It's an everyday thing, mm -hmm. and so uh, I enjoy that. Even though it can bring some frustration for all mm -hmm. of us at times, um, it's what we have and it's what we are. So um, I'll never change that. Well, and striking that balance right, right. between being a dad, being a husband being a coach and I mean that's life that's the reality of it and uh, you can do one of two things right you can you can we hear the stories about coaches that spent 20 hours a day in the office and never saw their family or you can embrace it and go this is what we are 
and let it do what it's intended to do. And that's, that's obviously the approach you've taken. It's complicated. Life is. Uh, our jobs <laughs> are. And um, I just don't understand um, why you wouldn't want that. I see the other side of it, but I don't understand that. Um, and so, look, like, um, I think that that's what makes our jobs here not jobs. Um, and um, it makes... The Stillwater OSU, it's why I feel like I have the best job in the country mm -hmm. uh, because I get to actually, st I feel like I'm still coaching and maybe in the 1980s in a way because it, it's, we still, we care about what we do here and we want to win as bad as anyone here, but I'm not willing to sacrifice winning for my family. And so, uh, and that's the way I want my staff to feel too. Well, and so obviously <clears throat> there's that deep connection. And this new staff has obviously come together very well. Things have gone very well. Let's talk about one of the babies. And when I say that, freshman, uh, Rosie Davis. Coach, I mean, she, I look up uh, on the leaderboard and she's number one right now in batting average. And that's amazing. It's, um, <clears throat> it's a really cool s s story. I think I'd be a liar if I told you I was re recruiting her for her defense. Mm -hmm. And um, she's had a harder time at that than um, her offense to start with. She'll get better on the other side. The offense has been a big surprise to me in a way from where, from where I recruited her. But starting in the summer this last year, I started to see some things out of her. And I was like, boy, she's really improving as an offensive player. I don't think I would have guessed that she would have been at the top of our uh, very talented team. But um, it's real. I mean, it, it's very real what she's up to. You look at what's real is the fact that you're new catcher, short, second, center, new pitching coach, new hitting coach. Talk about what, again, I, I've said this about you. You know, I've said this many times. You you are King Midas, right? Everything you touch <laughs> turns to gold <laughs> now, or, or something else. It's one of the two. It's, it's, never, it's feast There's or famine. There's a lot of the else. <laughs> So you're, it's feast or famine <laughs> with you. But Did you capitalize else? <laughs> <laughs> when you look at four straight Women's College World Series, and then you had all the newness going into this year, did you honestly know at that point, and again, you haven't gotten to the World Women's College World Series, but this team has done some things that are very repetitious in what we've seen in the past. Same typical kind of results. Um were you nervous going into this year with, with all that newness? Uh, I don't think that nervous is the uh, word I would use, but just just a little. There was I knew that there was a lot of unknown. Mm -hmm. I knew, but I look. I nervous is when you're you don't think you have good talent. We have talent. Mm -hmm. um, we just weren't sure how they would play together and yeah. how they would um, respond. Mm -hmm. um, and. They've just done such an amazing job. I, I, I really didn't have an idea of what we would do. I thought we'd be successful. Um, I just didn't know quite how yet, you know? And so the, the expectations here are real. They know that, they if you, if you feel that. I think that's what drives them to be who they are. Um, that's why they came here. So um, when we recruit, we, we keep talking about the same things. Uh, we're trying to, we're trying to, to take over and it's, it's difficult. We've gotten close. Um, and then you look up and you're, you're, we still haven't attained one thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we're still in that chase mode. That's something we've talked about. We have nothing that anyone else wants, um, except we do have a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> and uh, that won't stop. So maybe they all want that. But um, uh, we're still chasing. And, uh, and that's, the, that's the fun part of what we've got. In the risk of making our opening <laughs> podcast too long, let me ask you this. Um, the chase that you're on right now with the unknown, is it more fun this year or was it more, and again, I said nervous and you, you explained it differently. So I want to use the word nerve wracking, but that's probably not the right word either. Is it, is it different? How different? And is it more fun with this many unknowns, obviously continuing with the same results? I, I think I could be very honest and tell you I'm having as much fun as I've had in a long time. Um, and, and this is not a knock to any of the previous teams. I think what it tells you is the last couple of years became a little bit more difficult because I wanted something for those older kids that they had put us in this incredible position. I wanted it for them so bad. So you sometimes, it's very easy to lose sight of just mm -hmm. continuing to have fun yeah. and making yeah. it fun. And not, don't let them or yourself Feel like you have to do something just go be you every day the best you and 
Um, and we're back to that right now. We're back to just being the best us. I tell them every day, just be the best you. If it's good enough, it's good, good enough. And um, and last year's team, we were like, hey, we got to get back here. Yeah. Like you guys need to, we're going to get a shot at this again. We're going to make a run at this again. And there's a lot of pressure that comes from words you use that you don't even intend to use, but they just come out. And you know, with me, it's like diarrhea. It just comes out. <laughs> it just sometimes I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, and so, you know, what's interesting about that too, though, is you said, be you, you be you. And I'm not sure I know anybody that's as good about being themselves as you are. However, you require coaching. I don't know if you require it, you desire it, the coaching for you to be who you are. I mean, the Brett Ledbetters of the world and the coach holders of the world, you want that it's so easy to get in a daily grind and find yourself steered off, but you do a lot of self-reflecting in the course of a season and in the off season yeah. that gets you back to, so being you sounds easy, but, but we all need, we all want to be us and be the best version of us. Sometimes we need a little help doing that. I, 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 I need it. I crave it. I crave, um, I crave things from from my bosses. I crave them from my peers. Like it, I don't need to be told that we're good or any of that. Mm -hmm. Just uh, it, there's we all need a little bit of attention, right? Our our wives need attention. Our kids need attention. I'm no different than that. Um, I actually, um, as you brought up Brett, like I ran into uh, Brett at the airport in in Salt in Salt Lake when we were coming home from BYU, and 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 I I was walking with Jesse, my boss, and through the airport. I said, man. Um, if I could get 30 minutes with Brett every other week, mm -hmm. my life would be a little easier. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know, I can't even tell you what we talked through. <laughs> but there was something that he just gives me some, he's always given me just a sense of calm mm -hmm. and reminding me what's important. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's really cool. And so uh, it's kind of interesting that you bring it up because I just ran into him. Um, he's here working with the football team a lot right now and I haven't got as much time. Um, and I miss it. I'll be very frank. And and so um, when I get that kind of time with people like that, that I I, I trust, mm -hmm. um, and I I put a lot of stock into, um, it's refreshing and it's really really good. And and you and then turn mm -hmm. are able to do that for your players and help keep them along. And when he's not meeting with your players and with your team, and and I'm going to bring this up. It's not out yet. It will be a, a great piece on Scotland David, who is uh, yeah. uh, OSU Max is is put together and. And again, a player like that, right, who has done so much um, to, to keep coming back. And it's got, at times, it had to be hard to be her. But she's been able to do that. And I know you're very proud of that piece that's coming out soon. I am. I, I am absolutely blown away with the piece that OSU Max has, has done. And um, it's, uh, it, I texted Jason. I said, this is one of the finest things I've ever seen and it was hard to watch I mean it's hard to I would you know I was a little bit of a part of that and to be in that and just to be the, the emotion um, was rough and, I, and it, you just recall those things and it's and it's real so um, I, I'm super excited about the world getting getting to see that um, I think it'll tell a, a greater story about Scotty and and her struggles and I think we it's so easy to highlight when people are doing well and it's like we run from when people are not doing well. We run from those problems. They're, they're not. They're, we don't need to run. Mm -hmm. We need to embrace that and realize this is. These kids are going through real life. Mm -hmm. This is not a fairy tale here. I, I mean, it's just not. I mean, it's 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 hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard with injuries and families and uh, 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 outside uh, friendships and relationships. It's. It's hard, mm -hmm. and uh, we lose sight of that because we we want to pin athlete on these guys, and they're still people first, mm -hmm. and uh, and we need to, to not lose sight of that and enjoy the struggle and enjoy the successes with them. When you look at the uh, the matchup this week, again there are three teams right now, and I can't give Kansas credit; they're they're up there as well. Uh, but you got Oklahoma, Texas, and you guys. You've been the three top teams in this league. What What's the message to the team going into this? Because this is a huge series, right? This could determine the Big 12 championship regular season, seeding in the Big 12 tournament. Any different message at all? Uh, no, I mean we're we don't we've never 
put more emphasis on one game than the next game. I mean, they all they all count. Mm -hmm. Every pitch counts. Every day counts. Um, let's go take care of the midweek game, and we can worry about what comes up next. Next most important game of the whole year will be the midweek game mm -hmm. because it's the next game. And I know you hear me say that that a lot. You give me crap, <laughs> but it's the truth. Uh, it really is. And w as soon as we look ahead. Or look back, we're not the best us. We're not in the best place because we're worried about things we can't control. And so, um, like I said, I just told our team, it, everything will take care of itself, but the most important game is the midweek game. Talk about crowd. Uh, you know, I know how much you appreciate it. You, listen, you've been to some recent venues that are outstanding. Uh, you guys played out there at UCLA. and you know, But I saw, I didn't see the crowd that I see here. I've seen you guys play. You know, obviously, BYU's got a fantastic facility. But... Um, I know facilities are something that's got to come eventually, and, and we can't wait for you know the, the, the lottery to drop and us find somebody that wants to do that. But this place is so special when the outlaws and the social and the, and the souvenir shop and that new grandstand, when it's all full, the, obviously the, the, the home plate side, all of that, this place is special, and it could be, really, really good this weekend. Yeah, I would anticipate that this will be as good of a weekend as you've ever seen in this in this town for softball. And we've had some amazing ones. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been shocked that we've had this much early crowd mm -hmm. noise as we've had. Um, it usually takes a little bit of time for everything else to kind of work through and spring break to get past us and all that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you who's been the 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 really interesting uh, group out there uh, for us for really one of the first times is the students. Mm -hmm. um, we we haven't had the contingent of students that we've had already out here, and I so I'm really grateful for that. Um, we've got them out on that on that deck out there in right center field, and it's been packed. So it's been really cool to see and. Um, I hope they're loving what they're seeing. Um, I hope they're they're feeling what we feel each day here, and that's it. This is a really cool event. It's a really cool environment. These girls are really good, um, and and they're normal. I, you see them on campus. They're normal peeps. They don't they don't try to act like they're anybody else than just a student athlete here, and that's what they do. It's going to be a lot of fun. Starts on Thursday night. You've got uh, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday. All the games, moving the games up for the Easter weekend. Get out there and support your Oklahoma State Cowgirls. There will be tickets. Two things to close with. Uh, so you heard us talk about OSU Max. Get your subscription. Obviously, some great content. That one coming out with Scotland David a little bit later. And we've said it in other venues, but I'm going to say it again here. Your glasses are on point. <laughs> hey. I'm not even going to go there because <laughs> I feel like I'm being bullied right now. And so it's it's okay. Uh, it's no, it's life. a real compliment. Oh, okay. It's true. I can feel it no, in your, it, I can no. your smile they, and your laugh. They're, they're um, on point. It's just that they have their own, they ought to have their own Instagram. Yeah. That's how good they are. Well, what I really want is I want people to, to, to respond to this so we can <laughs> do this more. Because I think sure. we could have a really good podcast. It doesn't even really need, need to be about softball oh no we could we could do a secondary podcast yeah. that would be i think we need to have it, it may, i think we jason may, i think he'd like it we both may be short timers on the on the payroll but that's okay it's okay hey good luck this weekend good talking to you as always it's gonna be a fun year thank you let's get it done that's gonna do it for us for coach kenny g i'm casey kendrick see you guys next time on the orange power podcast mm -hmm.